Hi everybody, in this video I just wanted to talk about college savings funds. The, there is one in Washington State called the Dream Ahead account and it's run by the state because whatever interest you earn on it is tax free. It will earn tax free uh, returns uh, that as long as you spend it on uh, college related expenses. Okay. So personal finance wise, you would not want to be saving for children's college until you've got more of your house in order. For example, you've got a thousand dollars for an emergency fund. You've paid off all your debt. You've saved at least three months of expenses in an emergency fund and you're already in saving for retirement. So once you've done that, then you might think about this if it applies to you. So um, let's have a look at, there's lots of options when you sign up and we're just going to imagine you've got say a kid that's three and I'll just pick this fund here. It's the called the conservative year of enrollment investment option portfolio. Portfolio is a mixture of investment funds and what I want you to pick out of this is that this, this will show average annualized returns since inception and it will give the inception date and if I look at this row I want you to try to figure out what has been the average annualized return of this fund since inception. Can you see what that number is? So over the last year, it's been 18%. Over the last three years, 9.75. Since inception, 8.97. Okay. And that's typical, right? Um, and it's always good to look at the inception date. That's only 2018. This fund is not old. Um, so not particularly trustworthy based on this. However, when we look into the funds, we'll see that these funds have been around for a long time. But what we should be very skeptical of are things like this. Look at this, 2038. This portfolio has a 27% return, but the inception date's only 2020. So that's where it caught a jump in the stock market and it, it went up a lot. But over the long term, that's, that, that is going to average out and, and go down because stock market tends, does tend to go up and down, right? Okay, so what is it? what's a portfolio? Portfolio is a mixture of investments. So our one is that we're looking at is this uh, 2036 where you've got about half in stocks. That's the black part of the bar here and the, the kind of white part is bonds. Bonds mean loans. So somebody owes you their mortgage. Some uh, a city owes you money because they loan to build a bridge, right? Um, and the dark, this light gray is, is cash basically, right? Now, as your three-year-old um, grows up, this fund will become less and less risky. We'll have let the be less black, so be less stocks. There will be more cash, uh, more bonds, and, and and more cash. Till eventually, when they're going to college, it'll be half cash, half bonds, which are give a lower return, but they're less risk. So let's have a look at what risk means. If we look at this, is the Standard and Poor's 500. This is like the top 500 companies in corporate America. And this is from, you know, 1987 to now. And look how risky this is. It, the the, the uh, values of the companies go up and they go down and they go up and they go down. Let's have a look here. This is 2009, 2008. That's when we had the housing market crash back in 2008, right? And so if you had, say, $1,500 in this fund back in 2007, by 2009, it was only worth you know, 750. So it seemed like, hey, I lost half my money and you did lose half your money. Uh, and that's a real problem if you have to take it out in 2009. And so time is a big factor when it comes to investing. If you put your money in in 2007 and then try to take it out in 2009, you're in trouble. Or if you think about houses, if you bought your house in 2007 and then lost your job and have to sell it for half the price, now you're in trouble. So time is always a big factor. 
the point about it is look at the trend over time it does trend up right right so stocks usually do trend up over time the trick is can you get into a position where you can have you know five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars that you never have to touch you can just forget about because you don't need it for your bills or anything and you can just forget about it and it'll grow on its own and if you can well then that's the way to do it right um so that's a risk so so this is uh stocks they're risky um but over the long term they have a high return right so in other words you put you know around two hundred dollars in stocks back in 1986 or 85 and it would be uh you know four thousand dollars now that's 20 times more back four thousand by 2021 right so so this is stocks uh now this is this is the lowest risk this is putting uh, cash basically a money market fund right so it's kind of like putting cash in your mattress it has less risk but less reward right whereas your stocks would be more risk more reward right so let's have a look at cash ten thousand dollars in this money market fund back in 2011 and by 2021 it's pretty much still ten thousand well it's ten thousand five hundred but you know you think about inflation and 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 ten thousand five hundred in 2021 does not buy as much as ten thousand dollars in 2011 so you've kind of lost money because of inflation which is kind of what happens when you put your cash in the mattress it loses value right so you're actually losing money by doing that right okay so um back to our portfolio it has uh, all these different funds in it i'm looking at this column here for 2036 so like six percent of our portfolio of our money is going to be in this emerging markets fund and that is this one right the emerging markets fund and it looks like this it's a high risk and see how it goes up and down up and down up and down right but look at the y-axis it goes from about 10k 10,000 to 20,000 right so if you had 10,000 in back in 2011 uh, by 2021 you'd have almost 20,000 right so over time it did go up but you'd be pretty you'd be crying if you put your money in in uh 2018 and then took it out here at the beginning of 2020 you'd have lost a bunch of money you would have, you could what if you put in you know 16,000 here and by here it's only worth 11 you'd have lost 5,000 so again it's high risk if you're putting money in over the short term it's high risk over the short term if, if you if you can leave money in this fund and forget about it and not take it out for 10 or 20 years you should be okay right um here's uh this one is a medium risk this is a total market index fund um this one looks pretty cool because hey put 10,000 in 2011 by 2021 you've got 45,000 right but again if you put money in in January 2020 if you put let's say you know uh I don't know, thirty-three thousand dollars into into it, and then by February you only have twenty-six, so you've lost, you know, six, seven thousand dollars in a couple of months. So again, this does dip down over the sh can dip down over the short term. So, but again, this is a good one over long term. It looked like, um, what do we got here? International index fund, uh, medium to high risk, and again, it goes up, it goes down, but over the long term it does trend up okay um us bond index fund low risk but low return because look this went from ten thousand dollars invested in 2011 to thirteen thousand in 2021 so very low return really that's an average of 2.97 percent over 10 years so, so this one is essentially protecting you from inflation because it has a return of about three percent and inflation is about three percent so things are about three percent more expensive anyway and so that one you're kind of breaking even even though it looks like you went from ten thousand to thirteen right so that's how a college fund is set up and it's the washington state one is the washington 259 college savings plan and feel free to chat to me about it anytime.